Hi, this is Aussie Brick Chick here, and I am here with Tamara. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Second time's the charm. Um, we'll start with this one over here. Now, this is iconic, the butterfly ball. What made you choose to build this one? I know I saw it at Brickvention a couple of years ago. That's right. It actually came about because I found a book at a second-hand bookstall mm -hmm. selling this, yep. which brought me back to when I was a childhood and I remembered seeing it on the ABC TV as a little intercessional. Yep. And I used to run towards the TV when I heard the music playing and just seeing the book reminded me of my childhood and the colours are so bright and I do like to work with Lego in bright colours. So do I! <laughs> to me the iconic feature of the video clip was the butterfly and the snail so mm -hmm. I started building those first yeah. Yeah. and once I was happy with the butterfly wings and the snail shell the rest just came together pretty easily and as time progressed I built the extra characters. Froggy was next followed by the grasshopper, centipede and dragonfly and I also wanted to use this as a chance to experiment using novel parts usage. Yeah, there's some very, very interesting parts used in this one. So that was really awesome. Um, that definitely iconic to my childhood too, so uh, I can appreciate that one. So moving on, we have Beauty and the Beast. And if we look carefully, you can see Beauty is on the back side of that. So why did you pick Beauty and the Beast to make? I really enjoyed the movie. I actually enjoyed the cartoon version that came out about 25 years ago, so when the live action movie came out, I loved the characters and I actually started off really wanting to build Cogsworth and Lumiere, yeah. but there weren't enough gold elements Pops. available at the time. Yeah. So as it turned out, I built the Beast and Belle as the magic mirror to start with. And then thanks to the Ninjago Dragon set that came out with two by two pearl gold plates, the rest could come together. So it was done in two stages with the magic mirror first and then a few months later the clock and the candlestick. The clock looks awesome. The level of detail is just amazing. Like I've, I've only seen these particular ones in photos before so to see them in the, in the brick is really, really cool. Thank you. The, the facial details actually on both of them, the clock face and the candlestick face, were the most difficult parts and yep. set the scale. And once they were done, the rest came together, I think, pretty easily. But you know, they're the things that really identify the characters. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, moving on, we have the Hatter's House. So we've got some Miniland scale figures. It's close to Miniland. I think they're actually slightly larger and a bit more detailed, just because they have the eyes but no faces. Uh, so we have, I'm just going to quickly so these ones through. based on the movie, looking at the Mad Padder. Yes, they're, and they're based on the live action movie. And that's yep. just because of the colouring of, in particular, the Cheshire Cat is yep. green and grey. Whereas in the actual Hatter's house, I've used the collectible minifigure Cheshire Cat hanging from the ceiling. Oh, and that's from an more the, from the cartoon. cartoon version where yep. Cheshire is pink. Yeah. And the house has the bedroom at the top, the atelier with a sewing machine and hat moulds on the second floor and on the ground floor is the actual hat and office. Oh wow, and I like all the hats on the, on the Milner stands, they look really great. Do you want me to turn the hat around so you can see the other side? Oh yes, yes. I'll get my able assistant to... Your able assistant off camera. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so there's some elements scattered around as well. Oh, wow. So I've got a heart, clubs. It's a strange diamond. Yeah. Uh, the spades are on the other. Oh, clubs on the other side. Yeah. And it's all in keeping the colours of the Mad Hatter down over here too. That's right. So I went with dark red and dark green, so very autumnal colours. Very striking too. Oh, that's excellent. I quite like the Mad Hatters, um, the the movie, like the Alice in Wonderland movies. The characters were very colourful. That's right, and I think that's what attracted me to it. I tend to build things that take me back to my childhood. Okay, so we'll take one last look at that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that 
Thanks, Tamara. You're welcome. It's been really great seeing you again. Um, hopefully we won't leave it so long in between visits. I might have to come to Canberra next year. You'd be very welcome to come along. <laughs> and everyone else, um, get inspired. Look at all these interesting colours and parts and uh, just give it a go. Tamara is awesome. Um, Everything is awesome. Uh, but Lego is awesome. And she's very modest. Uh, <laughs> I'm fangirling here just a little bit. <laughs> Until next time, guys, uh, keep on building and I will see you in the next video.